The Biden administration conducts a trade. Brittany Griner for somebody named Victor Boot. We've talked a lot about him and Brittany. Of course, she was charged with possession of marijuana, had some cannabis oils when she was traveling over there. Many people obviously could see what Putin was doing, wanted to single out an American. Nice propaganda victory. What better way than to take a WNBA basketball star, if that exists in the WNBA, and then take her and use her as leverage as he wages a political war and a an actual war against Ukraine. So we are seeing that all sort itself out now because Joe Biden led the way. He posted this on Twitter. He said, moments ago, I spoke to Brittany Griner. She is safe. She is on a plane. She is on her way home. And it's a beautiful image, a warm embrace between Joe Biden and Brittany Griner's wife. And Kamala Harris is there too, standing behind the resolute desk in the Oval Office. What a beautiful scene. And we can see the president making the announcement. Here he is standing with all of the rest of them right by his side. And look who's over there, over the right shoulder of the president. There's Anthony Blinken, the Secretary of State. So you've got the president, the vice president, and the Secretary of State, along with Griner's spouse, all very excited that Brittany's coming home. Moments ago, I was standing together with her wife, Sherelle, uh, in the Oval Office. I spoke with Brittany Griner. She's safe. She's on a plane. She's on her way home. After months of being unjustly detained in Russia, held under intolerable circumstances, Brittany will soon be back in the arms of her loved ones, and, uh, and she should have been there all along. This is a day we've worked toward for a long time. We never stopped pushing for her release. It took painstaking and intense negotiations, and I want to thank all the hardworking public servants across Kamala, my administration yeah, who worked tirelessly to secure her release. I also want to thank the UAE for helping us facilitate Brittany's return, because that's where she landed. These past few months have been hell for Brittany and for Charlie and, uh, and her entire family and all her teammates back home. People all across the country all have learned teammates. about Brittany's story, advocated for her release, stood with her through, throughout this terrible ordeal. And I know that support meant a lot to her family. I'm glad to be able to say that Brittany's in good spirits. She uh, She's relieved to finally be heading home. And the fact remains that she's lost months of her life, experienced the needless trauma. And she deserves space, privacy, and time with her loved ones to recover and heal from her time being wrongfully detained. Brittany is, uh, is an incomparable athlete, a two-time Olympic gold medalist for Team USA. She endured mistreatment and a show, at a, and a show trial in Russia with characteristic grit and incredible dignity. She represents the best America, best about America. It is across the board, everything about her. Yeah. She wrote to me back in July. She didn't ask for special treatment, even though we've been working on a release from the day one. She requested a simple quote, please don't forget about me and the other American detainees. Please do all you can to bring us home. We never forgot about Brittany. We've not forgotten about Paul Whelan, Paul. who's been unjustly detained in Russia for years. All right, so he does mention, Paul, the other individual, the Marine, who is still there in Russian custody. But you can see, right, kind of a standard statement, not a whole lot to glean out of there. And again, I am actually happy that an American citizen is back in the United States. I think that two things can be true at the same time. You can have criticisms of Brittany Griner, and you can be happy that a U.S. citizen has returned home. And that's all fair, and I think you can leave it at that. The idea that this turns into sort of um, just an incredible victory without considering some of the consequences is, I think, is a, a little bit naive, right? There was something that was exchanged for this. This wasn't like a rescue operation, right? The United States gave something up. We're going to get there in a minute. And that is important to, I think, hold in context. But Corrine is also very excited about this. She came out and gave a three minute speech. Let's see if, how much of this we can tolerate. President Biden keeps his promises, and today he fulfilled a deeply important promise to bring Brittany Griner home to a family that loves her, a team that misses her, and a country that has marveled at her strength and courage. 
Brittany's safe return home is the product of months and months of painstaking negotiations that were the culmination of extraordinary efforts across the U.S. government. Officials from the White House, the State Department, and across the administration worked tirelessly and relentlessly to see this moment through. All right, so let's fast forward this a little bit. Just She says something about the, the decision having to be made, otherwise Brittany doesn't come home. Asked me to communicate once again her sincere gratitude to everyone in the administration and in their broader in, in their own broader support network who made this day possible. She also wanted to reinforce the commitment she and Brittany have made to stand up and speak out for other Americans wrongfully detained abroad. While we're celebrating Brittany's return home yeah. today, we have also uh, continued to be in touch with the Whelan family, for whom this news brings mixed emotions. In recent weeks, it became clear that while Russians were willing to reach an agreement to secure Brittany's release, they continue to treat Paul Whelan differently given the nature of the total totally illegitimate charges they have levied against Paul. Unfortunately, the choice became to either bring Brittany home or no one. So they made a choice to bring Brittany home or no one. It wasn't either bring Brittany home or bring Paul home. Right? People are asking that question because it sort of feels like that's what the Russians were proposing. The Russians said, no, you, we've, you got one of ours. We've got one of yours. It's a one for one. Who do you want? Which one is it? But we don't know. So she says, no, it was either Brittany or not. Brittany or zero. But is that true? We don't know. As the president said this morning, he will he will never stop working to secure Paul's release and return home, and he will not give up. On a personal note, Brittany is more than an athlete, more than an Olympian. She is an important role model and inspiration to millions of Americans, mm -hmm. particularly the LGBTQI plus Americans and XBL women analysis. of color. She should never have been detained by Russia. And uh, we are, I am, deeply proud of the work that the president has done, this administration has done, to get her home. With All right, so millions of Americans are uh, doing cartwheels in their living rooms because Brittany Griner is now back. And so we're going to talk more about what was given in exchange for her because that's what the United States government is really thrilled about. She's coming home. They're going to be reunified. Family's going to be uh, hunky-dory. We're going to talk a lot more about Victor Boot in a minute. We've got several clips from 60 Minutes, from Reuters, all detailing who this guy really is. But first, let's talk about our friends over at 4Patriots, because this is an amazing organization, amazing company, and we need survival food. Because you know a food shortage could be coming here even in the United States. Experts have talked about this as recently as this summer. We've got drought, inflation, new policies. America's food supply is near its breaking point. That's why survival food is more important now than ever. And you can create your own stockpile of the best-selling Four Patriots survival food kits. It's not ordinary food. We're talking about good for 25 years, super survival food, hand-packed right in family-owned facilities in the United States, giving jobs to over 200 Americans. The kits are compact, they're sturdy, they're water-resistant, and they stack easily. They've got different delicious breakfast, lunches, and dinners, and you can make these meals in less than 20 minutes. All you have to do, add boiling water, simmer and serve. And right now you can go to fourpatriots.com and use code Robert to get 10% off your first purchase on anything in the store, including this three month food survival kit. You'll get their famous guarantee for an entire year after your order and free shipping on anything over $97. They're called four Patriots because a portion of every sale is donated to charities. You support our veterans and their families, and you can go to fourpatriots.com. Use code Robert. Get 10% off your order. That's 4 Use code Robert and start building your stockpile today. All right, my friends. So we know that Brittany Griner is now home, which is good news in America. We're all happy and thrilled about it. But somebody else is going back over to Russia. This guy right here, Victor Boot. And he is not a friendly fella. He's actually what Reuters calls 
an international arms dealer, and they put together a pretty nice summation of this dude. And look at this dude's biceps, man. The dude is girthy, as you can see here. Look at that neck. I don't even think he has a neck. Now, what's interesting is he's been in custody for a long time, and he's actually lost a lot of weight. He went in there looking pretty girthy, and then he lost a lot of weight, right? He's been in custody for a long time. Now, he's going back home. He's going to be free. He's going to be able to fatten himself up a bit as he's feasting on the bodies of annihilation. This is Victor Boot. Who is Victor Bout? The Boot. Russian arms dealer Boot. the U.S. swapped for imprisoned basketball star Brittany Griner. The 55-year-old has been dubbed the merchant of death and the sanctions buster for his ability to get around arms embargoes. For almost two decades, Bout became the world's most notorious arms dealer, selling weapons to rogue states, rebel groups and murderous warlords wow. in Africa, nice. Asia and South America. Perfect. His notoriety even inspired a Hollywood film starring Nicolas Cage. Wow. Here's what else we know about him. Little is known about his origins. Biographies generally agree he was born in 1967 in Dushanbe, then the capital of Soviet Tajikistan. A gifted linguist, he later used his reported command of English, French, Portuguese, Arabic and Persian Listen to, to build his languages. international arms empire. Like six different languages he just listed. The dude is an international arms dealer who's fluent in multiple languages to build up his arms deals. It's like a Hollywood movie. It's like Jack Ryan or Jason Bourne or something. Who is this guy? A stint in the Soviet army followed, where Bout served as a military translator, including in Angola, a country that would later become central to his business. His big breakthrough came in the days after the collapse of the communist bloc, when he cashed in on a sudden glut of discarded Soviet-era weaponry. In 2007, Douglas Farah and Stephen Horn wrote a biography entitled Merchant of Death, Guns, Planes and the Man Who Makes War Possible. Merchant of Death? It reports Guns, Planes, the Man Who Makes War Possible. This guy. Look, they transport him with an entire entourage of people who are concealing their identities. They're so freaked out that maybe the Russians are going to ex extricate this guy. Like Mission Impossible, Ethan Hunt style. Did ...the following details of Bout's shadowy trade. Bout interwove his arms trafficking empire with a seemingly innocuous logistics business. He appeared to have little in the way of firm ideology, placing business above politics. His clients included rebel groups and militias from Congo to Angola and Liberia. In Afghanistan, he sold guns to Islamist Taliban insurgents and their foes in the pro-Western Northern Alliance. The end only came in 2008, after an elaborate sting operation by the U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration DEA. in Bangkok. They got him. There, Bout was arrested by Thai police. After two years of diplomatic wrangling, Bout was extradited to the U.S. Okay, so this guy's in custody out of the United States. It took two years to get him into the United States. Two years. And they finally get convictions and they just gave him back up. Where he faced a raft of charges, including conspiracy to support terrorists, conspiracy to kill Americans, oh, good. and money laundering. Money laundering, conspiracy to in kill In 2012, Americans. he was convicted and sentenced by a court in Manhattan to 25 years. 25 years. The Russian state has been keen to get him back ever since. Experts say the Russian state's continued interest in Bout, plus his skills and connections in the international arms trade, hint strongly at Russian intelligence ties. In interviews, Bout has said he attended Moscow's military... Nice job. So all these guys, you know, they take their photos like this. So, you know, they sort of put it up on their walls. Hey, remember when we got Victor Boot? Remember when we got him? Yeah, that was a big one, like a huge one. It probably took years for these guys to track him down. All these DEA agents. How do you think they're feeling right now? Probably not that great, right? Lots of people, lots of blood, sweat, and tears went into getting this guy, and he just went home to the Russians. Institute of Foreign Languages, which serves as a training ground for military intelligence officers. All right, so that's the guy that is going back to the Russians. And 60 Minutes did a whole special on him. So we're going to just learn a little bit more about him from there. Uh, this gentleman details why he is maybe 
the worst person in the whole planet? Victor Boot, uh, in, in my eyes, um, is one of the most dangerous men on the face of the earth. Oh, on good. On the face of the earth, <laughs> without a doubt. Mike Braun, oh, the former chief oh, of good. operations for the U.S. Drug face Enforcement of the earth. Administration, told us Boot first exploded on the scene in war-torn West Africa in the late 1980s. Great. Elevating bloody conflicts from machetes and single-shot rifles to... AK-47s, not by the thousands, but by the tens of thousands. Mm. So he weaponizes civil war in Africa. He transformed these young adolescent warriors into uh, insidious, mindless, maniacally driven killing machines that operated with assembly line efficiencies. Now 43, boot from the Soviet Republic of Tajikistan, is a mystery man mm. who reportedly served in the Soviet Air Force and Intelligence Service. The U.S. has indicted him on four terror-related charges, including conspiracy to kill Americans. Perfect. What makes him a threat to the United States? He is a shadow facilitator. Hmm. He's arming not only designated terrorist groups, uh, insurgent groups, but he's also arming very powerful drug trafficking cartels uh, Great. around the globe. Oh, perfect. So Take like fentanyl coming across the southern border, there's a war going on in Ukraine. The most dangerous man on the planet has evidently facilitated wars, funded both sides of the wars. And so we ask ourselves, you know, is it possible that more people will die now that he's out than would have died if he was in? Hmm, yeah, possibly. Taking advantage of Russian military contacts at the highest levels and the collapse of the Soviet Union, federal prosecutors allege Boot essentially became a one-stop shop offering an unlimited supply of stockpiled Cold War weapons to bad guys around the world, including Charles Taylor of Liberia, who's now on trial for war crimes. Hmm. According to the U.S. indictment, Boot had a unique selling point when it came to weapons trafficking. A fleet of cargo airplanes capable of transporting weapons and military equipment anytime, anywhere. More than 60 Perfect. planes in all, his own private air force. Those Russian aircraft... Uh, Private Air Force, he has. Air Force. ...were built like flying dump trucks. He could move this stuff and drop it with pinpoint accuracy to any desert, to any jungle, to any other remote place in the world, right into the hands of what I refer to as the potpourri of global scum. The potpourri of global scum, Victor Boot. The man, many consider to be the merchant of death, one of the most dangerous men in the planet, it took the DEA two years to get him extradited back to the United States, sentenced, convicted, sentenced, imprisoned for 25 years. Somebody who was intending to kill Americans. He's got his own private air force jets. He can just airdrop you know, supplies anywhere in the world at any time. He's now going home. Now, what is the United States getting in exchange for this trade? All right, now I've got some background on Brittany Griner as well. Victor Boot goes back to the Russians. Here's what we've got, though, America. Don't worry, Brittany Griner's back. Griner going in for the throwdown. Houston rumbling through, finds Griner oh, yeah. for the dunk. And that's what the sellout crowd was waiting for. So I got Brittany Griner! Slam dunk. Danger. Griner comes up with the steal and maybe a little showtime. Oh, she's, Brittany she's Griner, dangerous. the two-handed finish. Over to Griner who dunks it in. Whoa. Griner goes flying oh. in with the two-handed jam right on two. You're kidding. Oh, Brittany oh, Griner gives it a home. Wow, Griner. that's amazing. Parker will let her go. Don't look past for Griner. Gosh, okay. So that's Brittany Griner. Uh, obviously, what on earth just happened to my... Hang on a second. I, don't, I think something just crashed. Let's play that. Griner! Yeah, okay. So this is Griner. Now it's working. Okay, so the audio's still working. Don't look past... Now you can see, all right, so that's what we've got. Nice exchange, very nice exchange. And look, uh, you know, if you see some of these, some of these scenes, well, look at, yeah, there actually are like, there actually are probably a couple thousand people who are probably gonna be really thrilled that she's back. I mean, there were a couple scenes here. Well, that one's empty. Uh, there's really nobody up here in this, in the bleachers anywhere. Uh, let's see, but this one's pretty full. Like there's a couple thousand people here filling up the bottom. 
of the arena, which is great. A lot of fun. Uh, here's uh, here's practice. Their highlight reel practice shot. I mean, no one else, no other wow. woman who yeah. plays basketball can do that. Two handed, two feet, just goes up. Wow. I mean, you're gonna give the crowd something to cheer about. It might wow. as well be that, right? Well, yeah. So there's a couple people there who are probably really thrilled that she's back. Now it would be a problem. Like, hopefully, nobody who's there. Like, hopefully, Victor Boot, you know, doesn't doesn't cause ruckus to any, you know to anybody else anywhere like that would be a disaster if that if something like that happened i'm not i don't want it to happen i'm just saying like that would be weird if the most dangerous man on the planet you know did something to harm other americans i wonder yeah well hopefully that doesn't happen but yeah there are some people Brittany griner does have some uh some fans out there so all right so that's the exchange now victor boot exchanged for uh wnba all-star Brittany griner some people are asking if this was a fair trade. Was this a good deal? Would you pick that person for your dodgeball team and give up that other person for their dodgeball team? You've got two people who are left to pick for dodgeball. Which one is your your person? Which one do you send to the other side? All right. Well, it's a it's an interesting question. Peter Ducey brought it up. Ducey asks the White House, hey, Victor Boot seems like he's a little bit more of a war machine then Brittany Griner, we have prisoners and we exchange them. Was this a good deal or a bad deal, Corrine? In this prisoner swap, why did Russia get such a better deal? Look, you know, I've talked about this uh, and I'll say this again. Here were our choices. Our choices was uh, Brittany or no one at all. Bringing home one American or no American at all. I'd and like that's, to know that's, that's, athlete, we gave up a prolific arms dealer who was convicted of trying to kill Americans, who was called the merchant of death. The professional athlete is also an American citizen. So let's not forget that. That's true. That's who true. deserved an American citizen. And so, so and, 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 and I've explained how the Russians have illegally uh, treated, totally illegitimately uh, treated his situation. I've been very clear on that. Uh, we've laid that all, we've laid that out for you. Uh, and again, the president, felt that this was an opportunity to bring Brittany home. He is going to continue to do everything he can to bring Paul Whelan home, just like he did with Trevor Reed, just like he was able to secure Trevor Reed's release. How can you say that he's going to do everything that he can if he said just a few days ago he's not going to call Vladimir Putin until further notice? We were able to do this uh, through um, through different channels, right? We were able to do this uh, through uh, a through different uh, avenues, uh, folks from the U.S. government uh, that were able to make that negotiation, have those conversations, and, and secure Britney's return. Uh, so we were, we have been able to do this, and the president has been committed to getting this done. We are still working to secure Paul Whelan. Uh, at this time, we were not able to make that happen, but that does not stop us. That will not stop us in making sure uh, that Paul returns back home safely to his family. And just one other topic. Uh, you've said a few times that you really can't talk about communications between the Biden campaign and Twitter. Who is telling you that that's off limits? I, I've already had that conversation with, on, you, uh, with your colleague, I believe, yesterday. Uh, I've, I've already addressed this multiple times this week, so I don't have anything more to add. Uh, again, I've, I've, we've, we've, we've litigated this uh, all week. Don't What's have not, anything to add. So not a I'm going to the back. I'm going to the back. I'm going to the back. It's not answering Twitter questions and saying, look, there was nothing we could do. It was either this or nothing. She's like, hey, the Russians told us, man, it's our way or the highway. And, you know, I mean, they are the Russians. You know, they're like really scary. And so we had to just sort of say, OK, I guess if that's all we've got. Other people are commenting. They're saying, well, what leverage is left? And I don't know. Right? I don't know if the U.S. has a bunch of other Russian prisoners that Putin cares about. But this guy evidently was a real big one. And so you give him up. What kind of leverage do you have for somebody like Paul Whelan? Is there any left? Ducey wonders if there was a raw deal stuck there. Now, there are other people reacting. You heard Kareen say they're still fighting for the return of Paul Whelan. He's another U.S. Marine who is still in Russian custody. And evidently, he was out of the conversation. So we have Paul Whelan's brother. His brother's name is David. He was speaking with News Nation, and he was telling America how he feels. Now that that is a reality, uh, how are you doing? How is your family doing? 
uh, it's obviously very disappointing for us, but uh, it's a great day for Brittany Griner. It's a great day for uh, Americans who are being held uh, in, in foreign countries as hostages. It's uh, it's always good to see someone come home, and I'm very pleased for uh, for Brittany and for Sherelle and their family uh, to be back together again. Um, as, as you and I discussed earlier this week, it uh, is always a challenge with these cases, especially when you have multiple people, uh, multiple Americans in a single country, uh, because each of these cases really is different and requires different uh, solutions. And so while we were always hopeful, and I think uh, maybe a little bit too hopeful uh, after Secretary Blinken's statement in August that there had been a proposal made to the uh, Russian government, um, that, uh, you know, things can fall apart. And uh, sometimes they don't work out the way you want. Yeah. So, you know, pretty classy response, honestly. You can imagine somebody else coming out and saying, this is ridiculous. But he says, look, you know, we're disappointed. We're happy Britney's home, but uh, my brother's not home. So totally sucks on that. But you could hear that sound of disappointment in his voice. Apparently, Anthony Blinken came out and we did talk about that. We've covered some of Britney's court proceedings, which were sort of a sham. And then we saw conversation that maybe there was going to be further negotiations. And you can see just how orchestrated this was from the Russians. I mean, they sentenced her to like nine years of hard labor, I think is what it was. They were going to say she's going to, you know, a Siberian prison camp where she's going to just do hard labor for the next nine years. And that left everybody in America just squealing. Ah, so they're just ratcheting it up the leverage, making it worse and worse and worse until finally somebody buckles and says, okay, we'll give you Victor. Well, sure, we'll give you Victor. No problem. And, you know, that's what happened. But Paul was not a part of the equation. Now, the Democrats are reacting to this. Democratic senators responding to Brittany Griner's release from within the Capitol building. I am happy that she was released. It was a political prosecution. The notion that she was going to spend nine years in some Russian prison uh, was a political move. And I'm happy that the Biden administration was successful in negotiating I think this is good news, good news for Brittany, um, for her family. Um, but frankly, there are too many other Americans uh, being held captive by other countries. I'm glad that uh, any American, including Ms. Greiner, is released from a Russian penal colony. Obviously, I'd wish that on no one. Uh, I hope the Biden administration keeps up its efforts to uh, return more Americans like Paul Whelan, who's uh, still in custody uh, uh, in, uh, in Russia. So a lot of talk about Brittany Griner coming home, but not so much conversation from the senators about what the United States gave up. But instead for that, we can turn over to Representative Kim Young, Young Kim. Gosh, I got screwed up like Anthony Fauci. Young Kim is here and she's a representative from California. She's saying, hey, this release of Victor Boot was not such a good idea. I mean, this is an international arms dealer. This is going to be an international security concern for the United States. While we are glad to welcome Brittany Griner safely home to her family, to make it happen, the Biden administration ceded leverage and released a dangerous convicted arms dealer who was in prison for conspiring to kill Americans. This poses tremendous national security risks and will embolden Vladimir Putin to take more Americans hostage in the future. Meanwhile, Paul Whelan and other wrongfully detained Americans remain imprisoned. Pretty obvious there. If Victor Boot goes and he gets back together with the old good old boys club, you know, he's like, hey, hey, what's up, John? It's been a long time, man. Where you been? Oh, American prison. You're out? You're kidding me. How'd that happen? You'll never believe it. There's this... Uh, WNBA person. What, what the heck's the WNBA? Don't even ask about it. Anyway, she's a basketball player. We sent her back. I'm home now. It's all great. What do you want to do? Well, I've got the tanks and the um, uranium. What do you want to, you want to get, get together? Yeah, I'd love to. All right. So that's the representative young Kim asking, uh, actually, I think a very good question. What is the, what are the national security implications of releasing this guy that the United States wanted so badly? We have another clip here from a representative from Florida. His name is Mike Waltz, and he's also stating the obvious. We left a Marine behind. I don't know why everybody is doing cartwheels on this story. Yeah, it's great. Brittany's back home, but there are other people here that we have forgotten about in exchange. Look, I, will, I, I share your sentiment, Harris, that in the short term, I'm always pleased when we get an American home that's being unjustly held. That, yeah. And I'm happy for the Griner family. But in the long term, appeasing terrorists, appeasing dictatorships, 
never works uh, in the interest of the United States. And the whole reason that regimes like Russia, North Korea, Iran, the Taliban, and others participate in hostage diplomacy is in the end, we always cave, we always make a concession, uh, and we always win. Uh, or they always win, and we and we lose. So I, my heart breaks for the Whalen family. I think you know a lot of people are asking, and rightly so. So what was his crime? Not being a celebrity, not checking enough boxes. Yeah, he can't. Can he dunk? Can he dunk the ball? I don't know. It's pretty hard. Brittany Griner, six foot nine. Uh, unless that dude's you know got some hops or some height. That's his fatal flaw. Should have been a basketball player and female. So, so what was his crime? Not being a celebrity, not checking enough boxes uh, uh, for uh, Hollywood. Uh, the fact that we left a U.S. Marine behind uh, and, and, and made this choice, and, and I don't buy the Biden administration and President Biden saying we didn't have a choice. When do we start dictating the choices to Putin and the Iranian regime and the Taliban rather saying, rather than letting them dictate what we do and who we give over? Good point, but they're not really interested in that. They're more interested in diplomacy and uh, whatever that means to them, which means apparently getting dumped all over by the Russians. You have to imagine that the Russians are just laughing. Like Putin and Boot, they've got to be just like, I don't know, riding around on tigers or something, just thrilled, drinking vodka. Here is Joe Biden. He's asked about some of the reaction. Now, the White House was doing cartwheels on this. Extremely thrilled over the return for getting some of the consequences. And so there has been some bipartisan reaction, sort of uh, some disdain on this thing. And Biden takes a question from a reporter. You know, a lot of people are condemning some of these decisions. Any response, Joe? Mr. President, Mr. President, what do you say to the bipartisan criticism of the Griner swap? Please move Mr. President, what did you say to Brittany Griner today? Mr. President, what did you say to Brittany Griner today? All right, so he doesn't want to take any questions from the press. He gave a statement and that's it. So Griner's home. Boot is back with the Russians. And we'll see. We'll see what he's up to. I mean, Brittany Griner will be, you know, taking some time off from the court and then she'll be back and then she'll just be dunking that uh, basketball. And a lot of people will be thrilled. You know, I'll probably... You know, all those people in that bottom section there that, you know, will be extremely happy. Meanwhile, Victor Boot's going to go back, start his arms business and probably start dropping stuff off into the middle of Ukraine. And what about all the people who are conflicted here? What about all the people with the Ukrainian flags in their Twitter bios also that have pronouns and also all of the alphabet letters in there? Uh, Victor is going to certainly go back and help the Russians against the Ukrainians. So it seems like that's also a conflict of interest that nobody's talking about. But all right, at least Brittany's home. I guess that's good news. We will continue to discuss this and other cases. Thank you for liking this video and subscribing and following along wherever it is you're watching it. And we'll look forward to seeing you on the next one.